Back on post round from the 88th playing of the Masters, where a massive moment transpired at number 13 after playing 10 and 11 in three over, two back in a hurry for world number one Scotty Scheffler, who pours in the long eagle, would put a birdie on top of it at the following par five, number 15 coming home, another at 18, your leader by one, heading to Sunday. We now have the privilege of taking you inside the Butler cabin where 2008 Masters champion Trevor Immelman is standing by. Trevor, always great to be with you and what a day this was. Scotty Scheffler emerging and now has the inside track on our final furlong, but what did you make of the jockeying throughout those final two hours at the top of the leaderboard? Well, Joe, first of all, great to join you from Butler Cabin. But it sure was an interesting day with so much going on. We had the leaders starting at six under three of them to start the day. And there was so much movement back and forth. We saw eagles, double bogeys, chip-ins, three putts, all sorts of stuff. And here we are sitting with Scheffler at the top at seven under with a one-shot lead. So it was, uh, was a fantastic day for us here to be a part of. As always, Augusta National always brings the drama, delivers great storylines. Think about Bryson holding that shot on the 18th, coming from the mm. final pairing. Just a magnificent day, and I cannot wait for tomorrow. Well, we have talked about it plenty since he first slipped on that green jacket. The air of inevitability that comes with Scotty Scheffler, but this will be earned on Sunday. What will be required of not just Colin Morikawa, but these other chasers on Sunday to look this man in the eye and claim it as their own? Well, they're going to have to play really, really good golf. I mean, let's just take a look at Scotty Scheffler right now. For the last three seasons, he's been playing impeccable golf, winning tournaments left, right, and center. This season, he's won two of the biggest with the players and down in Orlando. And comes in here as the overwhelming favorite. After three rounds, he's sitting on top of the leaderboard. And he has not, this year, shot an overpar round. So if he just keeps doing what he's doing, the others sure are going to have to play great golf if they want to overtake him and slip on a green jacket. Trevor, it seems apropos of the moment. I'm wondering if you could share a memory with us from some 16 years ago, those moments leading up to your eventual moment in the sun. What can you tell us of that night before? How much of your focus was turned internal and how much was on, let's say, the man in red and the other names on the leaderboard? Sure. Well, I can tell you exactly the process that Scotty is going through. Obviously, the formalities of the scorecard. Then he'll have to start doing the media rounds uh, with the media right outside the scoring area and then go up into the press area and sit down for a little while. At that point, he may want to get a little snack. And then the decision is going to be, does he want to go to the practice area, hit some parts, hit some chips, maybe hit a few balls? Last night, he did do that. He hit balls right until sunset and then uh, grab some dinner and get some rest. That is the thing that's going to be most important for him. The last few days have been extremely grueling for these players. Look, they had the long delay on Thursday, so they had to sit around and wait for that. And then since that moment, we had two heavy days of wind. And uh, today, as this golf course has started to firm up and get faster, it's really had them on edge as well. So emotionally, physically, mentally, it has been a grueling test so far. So rest is going to be key for him. But he has a lot of things in his advantage. Look, like I said, he's the best player in the world. He's won here before. He knows exactly the feelings that are going to be going through his body tomorrow morning. And uh, he's going to be a tough guy to beat. Trevor, we so appreciate the time here on the Saturday of the Masters. We will check in once we have crowned a champion. Appreciate you, my friend. I look forward to it, Joe. Tomorrow is going to be great. What a time. The 88th playing of the Masters. Be sure to watch it with our team. Coverage begins on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus at 2 Eastern time. A moment befitting a champion, and only one will claim that title. Let's take you back out to Augusta National, where the great Kyle Porter and Rick Gaiman are standing by, fellas. Uh, if I may borrow uh, just from the First Cut podcast, what a day. I know you guys love to say it, but it seems so <laughs> apropos of this moment. Amazing, the final two and a half hours of what we saw. KP, give me your point of view of it all. Where were you? What did you take in? What struck you most? Yeah, it was uh, it was a real baptism for our guy Rick Gaiman here. His his first uh, moving day at the Masters, and uh, it was a great one. I was on 13 with Scotty uh, when he hits the shot in. Had to run right after that, so I hear the roar as I walk away, Rick, and I'm going up by the uh, leaderboard on 18, and 
the way they do it out here, obviously, is very cool. They post the numbers on the leaderboard, and, and the crowd on each hole kind of reacts to it and everything. And the reaction, the murmur going through 18 as I'm walking back up was was – Oh, my gosh, this is awesome. Because he had just doubled uh, 10. He had just bogeyed 11. This guy walks past me and said, oh, it's crazy. That's so crazy. And I was like, it's Scotty Sheffield. It's not that crazy. Like, he's the number one player in the world. It was it was a really awesome moment. To me, Scotty making eagle on 13 was the moment of the tournament. But we got a lot of amazing moments throughout the day uh, on Saturday and on moving day. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a catalog of them at this point. I was bouncing around between those those final three groups just as they were going through Amen Corner and then uh, back up 14 and then back up 17 and then to the, to the finish line. And it was it was electric. I mean, you were hearing roars all over the place. You were hearing the crowd. The crowd was so good. It was awesome. And the crowd was very pro Scotty Scheffler. I mean, he makes the eagle on on 13, and then he gets the standing ovation on 14T. He gets the standing ovation walking off 14T after hitting his drive. I mean, this is uh, a place that is that is trying to will him to a, a, a second Masters title. It was, it was electric for sure. Uh, it certainly came through on the screen as well. These two and a half hours on Saturday going to go a long way in deciding our eventual champion, but it does not look like it will be a coronation if things play out similar to the way they did today. It will be earned by Scotty Scheffler. Rick, who do you expect to apply the most pressure on Sunday? Boy, I mean, first off, they had Scotty on the ropes. Mm. They had Scotty on the ropes today. He makes double on 10. He makes bogey on 11. And, and they've got him right where they want him. Anybody, anybody can come and take this from him. And they didn't necessarily do it. I think I look maybe Colin Morikawa. Uh, what he has done this year has been awful. You know, and he has discussed he has discussed how <laughs> much he has struggled with his, uh, with his long game. The putter has been all over the yard. It is it is shocking that he is even in contention, but it's no longer a marathon. It, it is a sprint. There's 18 holes to go, and this is major championship appearance 17 KP for, for Colin Morikawa. Already two victories, another five top 10 finishes. If he snags this one, he has three quarters of the way to the career grand slam. It's it's one of those situations where um, you get a big boy in the moment and you see if he can go out and win another one. Yeah, he's, he's won all the majors that he's really been in on <laughs> yeah. a Sunday, so you know, the, the, the list of names that Colin could join uh, of guys that have won the U.S. Open, Open Championship, and the Masters, pretty historic. Mm -hmm. Jack and Tiger have both done it three times. you got names like Gene Sarazen, uh, Ben Hogan. Uh, I guess I'll have to follow that with Jordan Spieth. <laughs> uh, and then Colin Morikawa uh, could join that group, among uh, a couple of others in there as well. I, I think the guy that I'm looking at is uh, is Ludwig Oberg. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's how we say his name, but uh, that's what I'm going with right now. He's a menace. And you look at the guys that are at the top of this board, Joe, and it is, it's full-time hitters only. It is, the, it, it is the real ball strikers. And uh, Ludwig's in that group. I mean, he just hits the hell out of the ball he he just is I, I mean it's unbelievable what he's done in his pro career and um he, he's so impressive around this place from tee to green drives it great just doesn't make a ton of mistakes what's the Padraig Harrington quote where he talked about hey sometimes experience isn't everything sometimes it's good to be innocent and not know what you don't know and Ludwig not only doesn't know the masters he doesn't know the majors <laughs> this is his first major championship ever I think he's going to put a scare into this but I will say you're going to have to go get Scotty Scheffler because yeah. they did have him on the ropes and he slipped away. And it's unfair, Joe, that the best <laughs> iron player is also the best from Tita Green, has the hands that he has, is the best course manager, is the best emotionally and mentally, and he's a competitive dog in the fight. It's yeah. it's uh, it's really, really fun to watch Scotty Scheffler right yeah, now. Yeah, well-rounded. It will take something special to track him down and beat him and say join that Masters Club. The Champions Dinner will grow by one if someone can. If not, it's Burger Scotty style once again a year from now, fellas. Uh, before we let you go, I, I know you got to take this in and really feel the thing in your feet today, KP. How much of what we saw over that final two and a half hours, let's say, was course condition and how much was it the recognition of the moment by these participants? 
Yeah, it's a good question. You know, I, I think I think we saw both. I think we saw course condition. I mean, it was still very difficult out there. You know, the last seven holes were playing uh, a little, uh, like, two, two and a half strokes over par, and Scotty plays him in three under, so yeah. he gains five strokes to the field uh, on those last seven, and you saw guys ejecting. We saw Nikolai Hoygaard eject. We saw Bryson try to eject before making uh, kind of a hole-out birdie on, on 18 there. So I think there was some course conditions because it's, it's it, it wasn't as windy today, Rick. Mm-hmm. But man, it is it is fast and firm, and these pin positions. The pin position on seventeen was just. Disgusting. I think it was playing as the, it was either the hardest or second hardest hole. It was ejecting guys all over the place. Uh, it, it was it was really a. It, it, the, the back nine has been surprisingly tough. <sighs> Phil was talking about this on uh, Friday. It's been so so difficult this week, and I think the conditions on Saturday made it even tougher. The pin on seventeen was disgusting, yeah. and and if you were coming from the left side of it, and you were one inch past the cup, it was five feet past the cup and you had nothing you could do to stop it and it was testing a lot of guys uh to to get to your question joe about um how much how much of these participants know it's weird out here we could all feel that things were happening in those final three groups but because of uh the manual scoreboards and you can't see them everywhere and there's no technology or anything like that you don't really know what happened you just know something happened and you don't know if it was from Hoygaard, <laughs> who was maybe snapping a streak of of five straight bogeys or if it was scotty scheffler going out and getting you so it, it's you could feel that there was a lot of tension out there there was a lot of excitement and you could see that any chance these guys got to look at a board when it was updated, the patrons were getting it at the same time as the players were. It was a, it was a really cool thing to see. Well, we will soon find out who was built for it on a Sunday. History does await, fellas, and we're going to get it one way or the other. Just for the record's sake, I do need a pick from you. Rick Gaiman, I'm coming your way first. The, uh, the foremost prognosticator in our game. What do you like <laughs> to get it done? Hard not to say, Scotty Scheffler. I want to see if you're bold enough to. Uh, I am not. <laughs> it was Scotty. It was it was Scotty. It was Scotty on Wednesday. It was Scotty on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, he is as Kyle said. Um, He's so good at everything. And there are so many ways that this goes down on Sunday in which Scotty Scheffler comes out on top. And Scotty Scheffler doesn't need his best stuff to win this championship, which is really scary for everybody else. There's there's a lot more ways this goes sideways for Colin or for Max or for Ludwig or if Bryson wants to get back into the mix. There's just a lot of ways that this can go wrong. Scotty Scheffler, uh, I believe KP, is in the midst of a lot of moments, a lot of historical moments that we're going to look back on in a decade and say, remember when he rattled off X, Y, and Z? That That's where we are right now, and I do not think anybody else wins this golf tournament. Yeah, yeah we were talking about that uh, even yesterday, and to go back to your previous question, Joe, I think some guys felt some things today that they hadn't really felt before. Mm-hmm. Nikolai Hoygaard making five bogeys in a row. Bryson dumping one in the water on 15. So yeah, that's some course conditions, but it's also some of that emotion getting stirred up when you're only... 20 holes, 24 holes from winning a green jacket. I think Scotty gets it done uh, once again. He, he, Like I said earlier, he's the best in the world at so many different things. I think, Rick, we're underrating how good he is still. It, it, it's I'm trying to overstate it, and I still feel like we're underrating it. I'm with Rick. I think we look back on Scotty Scheffler's career 10 years from now, 15 years from now, and say, man, we, we had no idea what was coming. And I think uh, Sunday afternoon is going to be part of that for him. Kyle Porter, Rick Gaiman, fantastic work as always. Bring us home, fellas. We will check in on Sunday. And you want to keep tabs on those two? Of course you do. Download, subscribe, and enjoy the First Cut Podcast. It is the premier pod in all of golf. Our guys taking you under the ropes and into the action each and every week on tour, including a Masters Megapod. Download, subscribe, and enjoy the First Cut Podcast.